Hello beautiful people. In today's video I'm going to do three looks using the new Natasha Denona Trio Chrome palette. As you can see it has a reflective front. I'm not going to go over a lot of swatches or too too much detail like how much each gram is and the packaging because those videos are all out there and I'm sure you've seen a couple of them by now. Um, but I have used this palette for nearly a week straight and I have developed some thoughts on it. Uh, this look here is going to be the last look in the series. Um, I just started doing these three looks, one palette. I just did one uh, using the Anastasia Beverly Hills Jackie Anna palette that's going to be up next Thursday. Um, but I forgot to film a ending for it, so I have to remember to do both those right now. But anyways, without rambling on any further, let's get into the first look. Alright, first color, we're going to go in with Vert. And I'm taking that on a fluffier brush right in the outer crease here I don't want to take too much of this, I just want a little bit of color in the outer corner here alright next I'm going to take so I'm looking at my list here. I made, uh, um, I wrote down a couple looks that I wanted to do, and I'm just trying to follow my list. Okay, um, then I'm gonna take what brush am I gonna take here? This one here from Mac the Two One Seven, and I'm gonna go into Scrap, the dark khaki green here, and I'm gonna take that on the outer corner right here. And I'm going to take an even smaller brush. This isn't the one I want. Oh, there it is. Tiny, really small brush with the same scrap shade. And I'm just going to place that on the outer corner here. The scrap shade matches my khaki shirt. All right. Blending that out just a little bit. And then going back into Vert with this brush here. Just taking some on the outer edge just to blend it out. Okay, I'm going to go back in and add more after. I'm going to take some of the Scarab shade. It's weird how it looks straight up gold on camera. And the shift in these things is really cool. Anyways, on my finger it looks green. Looking at it, it looks green, but then looking at it in the viewfinder, it looks like a really cool gold color. And I'm going to take this on the lid and blend it up into there and scrap on the outer corner. Now, I'm going to take a little bit of glitter glue, like you can clearly see that, but I just want a little more pop down by the lid here, so I'm just going to take a little bit of glitter glue and then I'm going to take this flat brush here and I'm going to take that right over top just to intensify it just a little more doesn't really need it, but I want it. There we go. Bam. So pretty. Okay. I'm going to go back with a slightly fluffier brush with the shade Scrap again. And taking it on the outer corner here. And then, with that same... Actually, I'm going to take a slightly fluffier brush here with Vert. Vert. I'm saying it the French way, and I don't want to have it take over this look, but I want to put a little bit more intensify on the outer corner here, just to give it something. Maybe I'll take a little bit of ion, stick it right there. Okay. 
Okay. I'm gonna go back in with scrap just again one more time and just taking a little bit more in this outer corner here, blending it into there. There. I suck at French, even though I'm half French. Fun fact about me that you didn't know. Okay, uh, inner corner. Hmm. Okay, for this, I'm going to take a little bit, I'm going to experiment here. I'm going to take a little bit of Androdite, the mint green, and I'm going to take a little bit of scrap. And I'm going to put Androdite on first. And then I'm going to take scrap with that same brush and just dust a little bit on it just to blend it ever so slightly to create a little bit of a sheen. And perfect, I'm satisfied with that. I'm just going to take a little bit more of the scrap on a flat brush and just bring it a little bit higher just to blend it seamlessly. Okay, I am happy with the way that looks. I'm going to go ahead and apply a brow bone highlight, my usual, put some eyeliner on, and I'll come back and show you the lower lash line and the completed look. All right, so we'll see how this goes. Um, I did a trial on this eye. Uh, we'll see how it looks after mascara and everything, but the more I'm working with this, this is my third look that I've created. Um, the more I'm working with it, the more I'm realizing for me it's a companion palette because I need more shimmer. I just, that's the way I function. That's just the way I am. Um, I always feel so like stifled creativity wise whenever I'm forced to use one palette. So, um, I'm going to take the shade Plutonium. After that being said, and I'm going to put it on the lower lash line here. And I'm going to bring it about halfway. And then I'm going to take the shade. Uh, what did I use? I used a bit of the shade there. And then I'm going to go in with the shade. Did I use Plutonium? Or Diatonic, sorry. I don't remember because I'm trying to create a gradient from the orange to the mint green on the inner corner that I'm going to use. I think that might work. Okay, because that's not, I did some experimentation on this eye. Um, to start off, I'm going to take a little bit, nope, I'm going to take a small, um, not quite pencil brush, but, and I'm going to dip into shade Androdite, the mint green. Even though it doesn't look mint green on camera. And I'm going to put this right in the inner corner and blend it out into the green there and I'm also going to bring it down into the lower lash line area a bit. All right. That doesn't look bad. It just looks so weird to me because I'm always so used to putting a shimmer in the inner corner so this just looks odd. And then I'm taking, it didn't really work on this eye for whatever reason. I think I tried to experiment too much but I took a little bit of my um, KVD Alchemist palette and my fluffy duo fiber brush and then t I took the green um, what do you call these things topper shades duochrome I don't really know but I took a little bit of that because I wanted just a little bit of like mint green to be blended in here um, but it didn't really turn out how I hoped so I just did that just for the sake I did it on the other eye I'm going back in with that mint green shade and adding some more because it blended away Put some on the other side too. Okay. All right. Uh, I kind of want to add something to the lower lash line, but I don't know what. Maybe I'll add green. Let's add some mint green. Try to look in together somehow. I guess that. Okay, maybe it would be better if I add a dark green. Alright, then I'm going to take the shade Andrew. Actually, I'm going to take the shade Vare. Add a little bit of something different down there. Okay, that looks better. I'm going to go repeat that on the other eye, apply mascara, and come back and show you guys the final look. Okay, here is the final look with mascara on. I'm actually really enjoying the way this did turn out. I didn't think that pairing the mint green with the 
platonic orange shade and mixing there would turn out. I didn't think I would like the matte inner corner because usually I'm like more shimmer than I am matte and this is very heavily matte look with just the um, scarab, scarab shade on the lid. And I think it looks really cool. The more I experiment with this palette, the more I'm liking it. Even though at first I feel like it's not going to work, it turns out it does work. Alright, and I did pair it with a nude lip. I used, what did I use? Oh, I used MAC's um, Myth Lip Gloss. Lip gloss. Alright, on to the next look. Okay, so I'm going to do something a little bit different today. I was originally going to use the shade Kinetic all over my lid to really showcase it. Um, but I didn't want to do that because the color combination I want to do today requires me to use it on the lower lash line. So sneak peek, that's going to... That is that. Spoiler alert, sorry, not sneak peek, spoiler alert. Okay, so I'm going to start off by taking the shade Tungsten on the crease. And then I'm going to take the shade Redox. Which is a nice um, light beigey gray color, not beigey, sorry, lavender color. I'm going to take that on the lid. I'm wearing sort of a um, mauve cool tone shirt today, so I kind of wanted to play it up with the cool tone purples and mauve colors today. So first of all, taking that all over the lid. Now I just wanted a more or less a light wash of color. I didn't want anything... Um, too, what do you call that, overpowering? I've already made a mistake. Okay, um, I'm also going to take a little bit of the shade Naga. I've been really interested in using this shade, the Cool Tone Pastel Pink. That looks a little warmer on my skin tone. Really pretty color though. Super pigmented, like... She did good with these pastelish shades. No, yeah, okay, go ahead. All right, just a little bit more tungsten. Sebastian is joining us today. I don't know if you can tell on camera, but there's not much difference on my lid between the Naga and the uh, tungsten shade. Um, okay, so next I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start putting Redox on with a flat brush. See how that works. Sometimes these kind of shades look better with a fluffier brush. And I'm just going to really pack it on. I'm not sure if I need to use a white base or not. I'm going to try not to. What's going on nice? This is a lighter shade, so I'm really packing it on. My skin tone seems to blend into some of these shades, so kind of using a heavier hand. All right, that's showing up pretty cool on. It's actually showing up more of a purple color on camera than it is um, in real life. I'm taking this slightly denser brush, and I'm going to go back into tungsten, and I'm just going to take that on the outer corner here just to add a little bit of definition. Right, and that's almost it for the lid. I am going to cheat and I am going to go into uh, my Kat Von D palette for um, a shimmery iridescent white color. Sorry, pink color. Can't talk today. Because I just want something a little different on the inner corner here. I'm going to take Naga in the inner corner after, but I just wanted something... It's showing up okay. Let me just be unconventional here. I'm sorry for straying out of the palette, but you know that's what I do. Um, from the Anastasia Beverly Hills Glow Palette, Glow Kit, I'm taking the shade Gumdrop. It's a um, pinky highlight color. And I'm just going to take a little bit of that with that Duo Fiber brush just to give it a wash. And I'm going to take that instead on the inner corners just to give it just a little bit more pop of what I'm looking for. There we go, that's better. Okay, so now that we have the pink there, I'm just going to take a little more of the Redox and put that on the lid in case I lost any. Going back with my denser brush and tungsten, I'm just taking a little more of that. 
Okay, beautiful. All right, so I want to keep it super simple on the lid today, nothing crazy. I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of my face, um, apply some eyeliner, and I'll come back and show you the lower lash line. Okay, so I changed my mind. I've actually done uh, a little wing on this side, and I'm going to show you how I did it because I think it turned out really cool. So I'm taking this. This is actually a lip crayon, not a uh, an eye pencil. Sorry, a lip pencil, not an eye pencil. It's from the Sephora collection, and it's called Aubergine Dream. I was looking for a dupe for the Urban Decay Alkaline and I ran across this. It's a little creamier than Urban Decay um, but it works for me. So I'm just taking a little bit of this closest to my lash line. Now this is pretty much how I have to do eyeliner lately because of my hoodedness and I'm taking the super tiny fine little eyeliner brush that I bought at a craft store and I'm just going to take that and I'm just going to create ever so slightly of a wing and then smudge the inner corner out. Once you have that to your liking, I'm just going to um, wipe off the excess so I don't get my eyeshadow all gross and I'm going to go into the shade Manganese, the purple there, and I'm going to take that over top to set it. It's really cool because I'm actually get, not getting a lot of fallout from the shadow when I do this. Usually when I do eyeshadows liner, I get some sort of fallout. That's usually with like green colors or whatever, but um, for what it's worth, I personally don't care if I get fallout. I do my eyes first. And to me, it doesn't indicate the quality of the eyeshadow, but I know, you know, when I'm watching a lot of people's reviews and people talk about fallout and how much they get I personally don't care but just letting you know okay so that is the burgundy eyeliner that I've added uh, now I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest of the face then come back and show you the lower lash line all right so for the lower lash line I'm going to start off with a base because I want to I'm using Laura Mercier magnetic pink and I'm taking this along the lower lash line and slightly into the inner corner now I'm going to take the shade kinetic Kinetic, that's how you say it, on a pencil brush. Now I feel like this duochrome is slightly the least exciting for me. Um, just because I can't see too much of the duochrome reflect. Then again, I am using it just on a smaller part on my eyes today. Maybe I will have to put it all over my lid just to see, you know, its full potential. But for today, this is the look I wanted to create. So, it is what it is. Okay, and I'm going to take, in the inner corner, I'm going to take the shade Naga the light pink and I'm taking that on a smaller fluffier brush not too dense but also not too fluffy and I'm just gonna take that I'm gonna pack it on to get the maximum amount of pigment and I'm gonna drag it did I yeah I did I'm gonna drag it onto the lower lash line and into the shade kinetic just a bit but I'm gonna cheat because I can't help it this is the way I want to use the palette taking the shade gumdrop again this light iridescent um, pink shimmery highlight color and I'm just going to take that and take it over top of Kinetic and Naga just to give it a little bit of sheen and to help connect those two colors together I mean you could have left it as is but I wanted to I'm taking a little more Kinetic and I'm just going to take that and just blend it a little bit lightly over top of that go back in on this side because I don't think I brought it down as far Sometimes it's hard to do one eye and then the other to match them up. But when I'm doing tutorials to save time, that's how I have to do it. Okay, and then to be different, I'm taking a green eye pencil. And I'm putting that on the lower lash line. Sorry, not the lower lash line, the inner rim. And then I'm going to take the shade Androdite, the mint green. And I'm going to place this over top. I don't want to get to my eye. Okay. Alright. So I will go ahead and apply mascara and then come back and show you the final completed look. Alright, and here is the final look. 
I did add uh, a little bit of a different lip. I added the Kat Von D Requiem because I was craving this sort of vibe today. But if I zoom in on the eyes, you can get a closer look as oh, that's out once again. So that's the eyes there. All right, and I will save my final thoughts for after the third look, and I'll give you my total roll, total roll, <laughs> my overall opinion on the palette because I'm developing some as I'm using this palette throughout this week. All right, next look. Okay, so starting off with the shade Garmin, I'm going to take that in the crease with a slightly fluffy but slightly dense brush. And I'm going to take that kind of everywhere. And I'm going to blow it out just a little bit. This is a really, it's an interesting, it's a pretty shade. It's like, to me, I would describe it as like a peachy, rosy brown. I'm kind of getting into these kind of colors lately. I don't know what it is. Alright, I'm just taking that up here. Into the inner corner here. It looks like there's not much there, but in real life there is. Alright. It's going to take a little bit more right here. Colors blend so beautifully, and I have like no fallout. Beautiful, effortless shades. Okay, uh, what's next on my? Okay, I'm gonna put color flip on the lid. I love the shade. In certain lights, it looks like it's like a nudie, pinky, mauve color, and in other lights, it looks like it's like purple. This is a cool color to me. It's I think the one that's growing on me the most. The first time I used this palette, I paired this with um, the Megan Lee shade in the middle row, this shade here, and when I paired it with that, it brought out more of the purple, so I'm interested to see what pairing it with the more neutral uh, shade will look like. And I don't need to put glitter glue down, but I think I might, just because I I just want the most out of it, but can you see how pretty that is? Like, it looks like it's gray, and it looks like it's pink. Honestly, um, some people were comparing this color to the Pat McGrath, um, the duochrome or tri triochrome, whatever it is, in the uh, Divine Rose 2 palette. I actually prefer this one much better. As weird as that sounds. But we'll get into more of my thoughts at the end. There we go. This just brings just a little more pop to it. Just a little more. Okay, I'm taking this all over the crease, so all over the lid and slightly into the crease. I'm going to take more of Garmin. See, those two colors together are interesting. Like, I don't know if I like it at this very moment, but we will see when the final look comes together. It's weird how it's in the same row as that color. I mean, she obviously put it there because she thought it was appealing, but... For me, I just wouldn't pair these two colors together normally. So I'm just taking some Garmin on the outer corner there. Alright, um, what is next? I'm going to use... What am I going to use on the... See, this is where I want something like a light shimmer for the inner corner. But I'm going to go in with the shade Naga. That pastel pinky purple color. I swatched it next to like the one from the Love Palette. The, the pink from the Love Palette. And the one from the Love Palette was a lot more pink. And this like was pulling a lot more like lavender. So I thought that was interesting. Alright, and I'm going to take a little bit of dye, uh, sorry, color flip with that same brush and just blend it into it. And blending it up. Okay, that is good for now. 
can't say I'm loving this look so far, but we will keep rolling with it. Maybe if I take, I'm going to take a little bit of diatonic, the peach, and I'm going to put that right here. Maybe I just need a little bit of a pink to blend with the Garmin. Maybe it's what I need. I don't know what I need at this point. Okay, um, I did want to do something a little bit different and use Scarab as a liner for this look. I'm not sure how that's going to turn out, but I'm going to go for it and see. So I have a green eyeliner here from Annabelle. Any green eyeliner you have will do. And I'm just going to take this as a base because I want something for the scarab to really stick to. And I'm just taking a really small eyeliner brush and helping maneuver that liner on my lid. Okay, I'm going to take the same brush I just used, I just wiped it off, and I'm going to dip into Scarab. Might have some fallout with this. Alright, that is very interesting. Pretty. I mean, I can't say that I would ever pair these shades together, ever, in like normal life, if they weren't in the palette. Okay. Going in with a little bit more Garmin. Letting that out just a little bit more. Okay. I'm going to go do my brow bone and do the rest of my face and then I will come back and complete the look. Alright, for the lower lash line I'm putting a base on first. I'm using my Essence uh, pencil. And then for the lower lash line I'm going to take Diatonic which is the peachy shade. Oh, I did want to add that I did take a little bit of tungsten just like the lightest wash and I put it over top of Garmin because I didn't like how brown it was. I wanted to bring a little bit more of the uh, purple tone to it because Color Flip does have a purplish tone. So that's what I did off camera. I'm sorry I didn't film it but I told you about it so I did that. Alright so diatonic lower lash line. Now I am going to cheat and I'm going to take a different color and add it in because I need some shimmer. So I'm taking Makeup Geeks I'm Peachless and I'm putting this on the inner corner because I love pairing a shimmery peach with Diatonic because it's so pretty. And I think I'm going to take that as well in the inner corner and add something else on top of it after. Okay, do I think I need, no, I think that's good. Where'd my brush go? I like the way it's um, very lightly feathered coming down. I like the way that is like a soft. I love those two, how those two colors play together too, the tungsten and the uh, peach color. I love those two colors together. Okay, I'm also going to take a little bit of um, this new pencil here for my waterline. And I'm debating if I want to add another color to it. I wonder what... You know what? Let's use Vertex. Because it is a neutral peachy bone color for me anyway. On me. And it will be a good color to set the lower lash line with. Alright, I'm just going to touch up Diatonic once again. I hate it when powder gets in my eyeball. Okay. 
From there, I'm going to go ahead and finish the other eye, and then I'll come back and show you the final look with mascara on. Alright, and here is the finished eye look with mascara on. And I've paired it with a nude lip. Alright, so final thoughts on this palette after I've used it. I did three looks using it that I filmed. I also used it for, for two days prior to the looks that I was filming because I wanted to get a sense for uh, the shadows and just, you know, the overall feel of the palette. My, I like this palette. I don't regret buying it. Um, I know some people might have purchased it for the trio chromes um, or the chrome shadows that are in the center here. I personally, like, don't go head over heels for those duochrome, triochrome, color flip shades that have like, you know, one shade this way, one shade that way. Like, I don't find those, like, I don't chase after them. I don't have a high interest for them. Like, I had the one in the Pat McGrath Divine Rose 2 palette. I didn't mind it. I, I've only used it twice. I don't love it. Um, but I basically got this palette because I thought the mattes in here were, I liked the mattes in here. Like I liked how you have like a pale pink there. I liked the vert shade. I liked the khaki green color here. Um, this cooler purple lavender shade. I just thought, I thought this one honestly in, on the online swatches and online, you know, promos was going to be a bit darker. It was a bit lighter than I had expected, expected, but that's okay. Um, and honestly, of the three shades here, this one I wanted, like, I was most intrigued by just because I have a soft spot for green eyeshadows and I'm always on the hunt for that perfect like perfect green like the light but dark and multi-dimensional that pretty much hits the mark for me um this matte sorry all these are matte what I meant to say was this light mint green here uh, reminded me of the one from Colourpop so I mean I didn't buy it for that specifically but I do like the variety you get in here um, when I first got it, it was giving me a little bit of Kat Von D pastel goth vibes. Um, just because if I can hold, how, how do I hold these both up? I'm not very good at doing these. So just because you have the two purples here, you have the two purples here, um, that pinkish, uh, peachy shade is, reminds me of that one right there. Um, I did swatch th this one compared to this one, and they are very, very similar. Like, if I didn't have this, I could create a lot of looks. Not a lot of looks, but I could create some of the purple shades with this palette. As well as, I will compare a couple swatches to um, a couple other Natasha Denona ones that I've noticed. So, the shade Diatonic. You okay there, bud? Reminds me of Peach Puff from the Tropic palette. I took my green shit out because it cracked and I wanted to keep it safe. So that's Peach Puff. I wonder if I can... I'm not going to pop them out, but I'm going to swatch them side by side. But if I can show you in the pan, how do I do this without completely creating a mess? Oh my gosh. Ugh. So Peach Puff and Diatonic side by side right there. Now. I will swatch them for you. So there's Peach Puff. Sorry. There's Diatonic. Peach Puff, Diatonic. Peach Puff, Diatonic. So Peach Puff is right here, and Diatonic is right here. I'm not sure if you can tell on the viewfinder or the camera. Um, Peach Puff is just slightly darker, Diatonic is slightly lighter. But I mean, on the eyes, I don't think you'll be able to tell very much. So that was one that I reminded me of something else I had. What was the other one? Oh, Plutonium. The uh, nice yellowy orange shade here. That one there reminded me of the one from the Sunrise palette. Car Carnelian. Again, I'll hold them side by side if I can. Oh, this is so hard, guys. So there you have those two shades right there. And I will swatch them for you. If I don't drop any of these, because that would be devastating. Okay, so let me just wipe my hand off. Okay, so that's Plutonium. And that's Carnelian. So it's a bit darker. This is Carnelian and Plutonium. So... 
Carnelian from the Sunrise and Plutonium from the Trio Chrome palette. So they're very similar. Sorry, I had to sneeze. Give me one sec. Okay, sorry about that. Alright, so they're very similar, those couple colors there. Um, oh, I also have one shadow that I just purchased from MAC that I'm going to show in a haul, which probably will be up before this one. But it is basically the exact same color as Tungsten here. So I have a couple duplicates in my collection for a few of them. Um, another thing I wanted to note was that when I did a look with the green row, it gave me a lot of Melt Gemini vibes. Just because it has a mustard shade in there and that green color is really similar. I'm not going to hold my Gemini palette up on too much of an angle. Just because it's going to fall. Like When you're looking at them side by side, they don't look similar at all. But the look I got, so that's... Oh my gosh, how am I going to do this? So, Gemini at the top and the green one from Natasha Denona at the bottom. Now the look I did using the Natasha Denona palette, the only reason why I got those vibes was because of the khaki green shades here at the top and the green shade here, Goals. While it doesn't have the crazy insane flip that Scrap does, Scarab does, sorry. So that's the Gemini green. Now this is going to show up as like gold on camera because that's just the way it's going to reflect. But I mean, they're very similar on the eyes. I mean, they're even showing pretty similar on the viewfinder here. Um, so that's Gemini and that's Natasha Denona Scarab. So Gemini and Scarab right there. So I mean, as they're both really pretty. But the look that I got using it, and same with the, the mochi shade here. It reminded me a lot of the Verit shade. So there's the Verit shade and there's the Mochi shade. Am I saying that right? Mochi? So Verit and Mochi. There and Mochi. So I mean, while I don't regret buying the palette, I feel like I am getting similar looks using other combinations that I have. Now it is nice to be able to have, should I compare Scarab to Leo? Okay, so I just compared Scarab and Leo. So, no sorry, Scrap. Scrap and Leo. So they're different. Leo is much greener, whereas Scrap is more on the brown side. Oh, sorry, my nose is running. Okay, what am I trying to say here? I like this palette. I didn't buy it for the chrome shadows, although I like them. My favorite one is Color Flip, this last look here. That is my favorite. I use that one more um, than the other two. Actually, no, I use Scarab and Color Flip the most. Kinetic is nice, although I have a lot of like sparkly green colors in my collection. Um, the Garment Shade's beautiful. Redox is really nice. By the way, when I wore Redox and Tungsten the other day, uh, which was the look, the second look, oh my gosh, it stayed on my lids and did not crease all day long. I was shocked. Sometimes mattes crease on me, but I was surprised how well those stayed on. Like, wow. Insane. I mean, usually I use a shimmer on my lid and then I use a, uh, the glitter glue to make it stick. So I get some creasing during the day, but I mean, that's normal for every shadow I wear just because I think this is getting to the end of its life. But I'm going off on a tangent here. Lasting Power was amazing. I barely got any fallout when I used the shadows. Um, what am I trying to say here? Let me just refer to my notes. Oh, and the last point I wanted to make was every look that I made, I found myself wanting to reach for some sort of some sort of shimmer. So for me, like no palette for me is ever a one and done. I don't buy palettes to be one and done palettes. I always use them in conjun in conjunction with other palettes because that's my style. This last two weeks, I really spent a lot of time in this palette and in my Jackie Ina palette from Anastasia because I was trying to create you know multiple looks with the same palette, and I can 100% confirm that my creativity is stifled when I'm using one palette. I mean, I've said this a few different times here on my channel. However, um, I 
I don't I don't think I'm gonna return this because I do like the looks I'm getting and I do like the variety of shades that are in here uh, Garmin probably isn't too unique to my collection I'm pretty sure I can find some sort of rosy brown from my Huda Beauty collection Diatonic um, I have a couple similar shades to that Tungsten it sucks that I have that in the MAC shade I just got uh, color flip though is beautiful kinetic I'm gonna get more use out of that scarab is awesome like for pastel ish colors they're very pigmented and I didn't have any trouble with getting those to stay I put androdite on the inner corners in the first um, look that I did I think and it lasted all day without fading so overall I'm very happy with the quality you're getting here um, I did get this on sale so I didn't spend the full price for it otherwise I don't I wouldn't have got it otherwise just because as much as I love Natasha Denona, I don't fall for every single one of her palettes. If it speaks to me, I buy it. If I don't, if it doesn't speak to me, I won't get it. Um, but with that being said, with the shimmer, it's a companion palette for me. Um, other people will have different preferences with their makeup styles and makeup techniques. But yeah, those are my final thoughts and opinions on the palette. I like it. The mattes blend beautifully and creamy. I didn't have any, any issues with any shades that I've used. And I think to this day, I pretty much used all of them. Yeah, I definitely use every single shade in this palette. I use Vertex on the last look in the in the lower waterline, so I'm not sure if that counts or not, but I think it counts because I still use it. I mean, it's a rather light shade, so it probably could be a blending shade for something else. I don't know what, because there's nothing... Maybe Garmin, maybe Diatonic, some of the lighter shades. But anyways, those are my final thoughts and my three looks with this palette. I'm going to probably do a couple more using this with the Companion Palette in other makeup tutorials going down the road. But without further ado... Uh, I'm going to end this video. I thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Thank you. Have a good day.